Good morning, everyone, and um, certainly a very warm welcome to Istanbul. Um, I'm very honored to be here today in this vibrant city, a uh, city uh, that I've hold, called home for some time also. And um, it's the perfect place to gather and discuss uh, entrepreneurship, innovation. Um, to me, entrepreneurship is all about staying hungry and taking risks, but smart risks, to innovate uh, in meaningful ways. Indeed, today, what we have is a choice. The choices between to innovate or to become irrelevant. You either innovate or you become irrelevant. So the key today to, for countries, for organizations, for individuals, is all to work to solve the algebra for growth, the calculus for growth. Countries need growth, companies need growth, large, small, medium size, and we as individuals, we all need growth, Grow, growth for our own development. And without that, um, we can't continue. And to get that growth, we all have to innovate, to seek new opportunities. So the question for the next, this decade and the next decade and beyond is, what can we all do collectively to strengthen a culture of innovation and growth? Because it all starts with the culture. Let me first uh, take you through a little bit of the history of my own company, one of the Fortune 50 companies that I have worked for for the last 40 years, uh, and tell you how we uh, look at innovation in, my, in this large organization that employs 770,000 people uh, in more than 200 countries. And then I'll also share with you some uh, lessons on leadership um, and innovation that I think uh, are helpful. Today, the consumer landscape is rapidly changing, which means that we have to stay very close to the evolving consumer. The consumer is getting much more empowered. The consumer wants more choice. Marketing communication is changing from mass marketing to mass personalization rapidly. And inside our own organization at Coca-Cola, um, we're working hard to build a culture of innovation, a culture across all aspects of our business. Um, in a way, 132 years ago, when Coca-Cola started, in, at that time, a small city in the United States, in Atlanta, itself, Coca-Cola itself was an innovation. There was no such thing as a carbonated drink at that time, and it was the first, in a way, carbonated drink that had flavor in it. Um, the early salespeople of Coca-Cola, back 125 years ago, created the first free sampling coupon. Sampling means giving an incentive to consumers to purchase a product again create trial. They then invented something called a six-pack. Everyone knows what a six-pack is, a six-pack of, of beverages. It was an easy way for people to carry the product more than one bottle home. That was also an innovation. They tapped into the power of all kinds of media, available media, newspapers at that time, there was no internet, there was no television, but in, they tapped into newspapers, outdoor signs, magazines, point of sale pieces, advertising on vehicles. Coca-Cola was the first advertiser on horse carts because it was delivered by horse carts. 
and they painted horse carts into red colors. They were the first advertisers again on horse carts. And then it moved to radio, and then later on it moved to movies and television. Another very important innovation was the creation of the franchise system. Coca-Cola created the franchise system. The franchise system was created so that there was enough capital to grow the business because capital could, did not then come from only one source, but from multiple sources. But despite all of that innovation, it, the company remained a, um, essentially a one product, one package business for most of the first century. And then now, in the last 30 years, 3,500 products and growing much more rapidly than ever before. So that itself, again, is an explosion of new products, 550 brands and 3,500 products. And the innovation that uh, the company, the Coca-Cola system needs, relies greatly on the power, what we call the power of partnerships. You cannot do any, all of this alone. Partnerships with its bottlers, partnerships with the suppliers, partnerships with all the NGOs that it has partnerships with, partnerships with its customers, partnerships with even its consumers who invite the brands into their lives 1.9 billion times every single day, all around the world. And that, that whole partnership with stakeholders is a critical theme because in today's world also for large public companies you can't just create value for your share owners you cannot survive and optimize shareholder value creation unless you create value for a host of stakeholders when you create value for your employees for your consumers for your customers for your NGOs partners the governments that host you in all the nations around the world, then you can optimize shareholder value creation. That's why power of partnerships are so critical. Today we're committed to innovation across all our businesses. Innovation in beverages, innovations in brands, innovations in sweeteners, innovations in packaging, all kinds of packaging innovations in, in cooler technology, energy management systems, innovations in water conservation, innovations in marketing, advertising, customer service, and continued. And again, innovations in helping to create a better planet. That is how the Coca-Cola company became the first water neutral company in the world. We put out a goal in 2010 to become water neutral in 2020. And as one of the largest users of water in the world, we use half a trillion liters of water every year to make our beverages and what's contained in our beverages. We said we would become water neutral by 2020. We achieved that in 2015, the first large scale user of water in the world to achieve water neutrality. And now we are water positive. We give back more than we take. And that was done through a host of innovations. To, before we used to reduce the water in the 1,004 factories in 207 nations. To reduce water, we innovated a system of sterile air to rinse our bottles and cans before we filled them with sterile air instead of with water. That saved huge quantities of water. The second was recycling and giving back to the clean water systems of all the cities. And the third is water replenishment projects because the first two were not enough to get us to water neutrality. So we have two kinds of innovations that we look at, core innovations that are related straight to, strictly with our products, like sweeteners, like packaging, and then innovations like the water neutrality that I just mentioned. Um, 
Often, um, we create brands internal, new brands internally uh, by studying individual markets and trying to meet evolving consumer needs. Um, the first hundred years, uh, when I first joined the Coca-Cola company 40 years ago, we had never seen a fruit tree before in our life. We didn't even know what a fruit tree looked like because we were not in the fruit business. Today, in more than 30 nations, including Turkey, we have planted tens of millions of fruit trees with our partners. And only in the last 10 years in Turkey, we have planted more than 7 million stone fruit, stone fruit trees. Stone fruit trees are basically peach, apricot, wild cherry, cherry, and plum. Across the world, in countries like Brazil, um, Argentina, Florida, China, we have citrus trees, India, we have pomegranate trees. As I, I, as I mentioned, Turkey was selected as one of the major hubs for stone fruit trees. And if you add all the areas of trees we have, and mango trees in Africa, the total area that we have trees under plantation is the size of Belgium. And we are the largest producer of fruit juices now in the world by far. So all of this tells you that to be a successful entrepreneur, to innovate successfully, you have to follow the consumer, follow what is the trends in the world, and ensure that you can stay ahead, not follow, but stay ahead of those trends. Um, we continuously strive to grow in a time of fast-changing tastes, consumer tastes. We see innovation as the only way to create that long-term value. And indeed, building a stronger innovation culture also helps us to become more agile in a company of 770,000 employees and better equipped to succeed and grow. So that's just a snapshot of um, how we see innovation. We also believe in one thing, and that is the best ideas are not inside the company, they are outside. So we encourage the culture of looking outside, creating partnerships outside. When we innovated the first plant bottle in the world, a beverage bottle made partially from sugarcane waste, that idea did not come from inside the company. It came from one of our partnerships in India, because India grows a lot of sugarcane. And that bottle was basically an invention that we took, that was created with a, through a partnership that we funded in India. And we now have sold more than 80 billion plant bottles in the last three, four years. And we're now moving to 100% recyclable uh, bottle made out of plants. The dream is to make a bottle where people can drink the beverage and then eat the package. Now let me um, share a few thoughts with you on um, successful 21st century uh, leadership. In my, first, in my view, um, tomorrow's best innovators, leaders, uh, must have a global world view. The ability to navigate diverse people, places, and culture. And that's why I think uh, holding this important meeting here in Istanbul is, is so meaningful. Um, Istanbul is one of the most diverse places in the world. The best ideas always come from the diversity. People who come from different cultures, different backgrounds, different religions, different parts of the world, come together, talk about solving something. There is no better place than Istanbul to do that, in my opinion. And I've traveled, there's only about 10 countries in the world that I haven't been to. And I can tell you that still, Istanbul is the best place for creating a culture of diversity and bringing out the best solutions for anything. So when we look for um, leaders, young leaders, 
We look for people who are as comfortable living in Istanbul or Islamabad or as comfortable living in New York or Nairobi. Diverse, different backgrounds, and comfortable moving from country to country. Culturally comfortable moving from country to country. Second, successful 21st century leaders must be master relationship builders. People who treat others with dignity and respect. I always say to young people, never, never eat alone. When you don't eat alone, you break bread with someone, there's a chance to build a relationship better with someone. Don't waste that opportunity. And the very best will be those able to build vibrant relationships across what I call the golden triangle. The golden triangle is between business, government, and civil society, NGOs, universities, etc. Today's huge global multi-social problems, economic problems, will not be solved only by business, will not be solved only by government, will not be solved only by NGOs. It has to be solved collectively in this golden triangle. Third, um, one needs to remain entrepreneurial with a strong and abiding respect for cash. Entrepreneurs always have a great respect for cash, and that's something that I amazingly admire about them. So I tell all, my, all the people that work for me and all the people that I talk to at universities, keep cash on you, never lose respect for cash, and all the time, never let money become uh, an abstraction, not an obstruction, but an abstraction, uh, because it's really important um, to uh, remain entrepreneurial and to have a respect for cash. Fourth, get outside more. Don't stay in. Organize your life so that you don't stay in the office, go outside. Since I started my career on trucks, I worked for a year, getting up at 3 a.m., filling trucks and selling Coca-Cola in Lubbock, Texas, Needham, Massachusetts, California, every day for nine, ten months. Since that time, I, I knew what the point of impact was. Every business in the world has a point of impact. Point of impact is where in 27 million retail outlets, money changes for our beverages in the 27 million retail outlets. That's why every week, no matter where I am, this week also in France and Turkey. I've already been to France. I visited stores. I'm going to visit stores here in Turkey. I always visit stores. Look at our products. Look at the pricing. Talk to the store owners. Look at competitive beverages. Every time I learn something new. It's really, really important. Get outside more. Learn something. Don't forget what you learn. And finally, um, Tomorrow is going to belong not to the cynics, but to the optimists. There's no question about that. If you're going to get up every day to make the world better, you have to believe that positive change is not only possible, it's not only possible, but also positive change is likely. There's no need to be a naive optimist. Not, I'm not talking about that, but you have to believe that positive change is likely in the world. Yes, there's going to be a huge amount of negative news, because we all know that positive news doesn't sell, so everything that you look at is negative news, mostly in the media. But if we step back and look at what's happened over the last two, three decades, it's astounding. Entire new industries have emerged from nothing, from thin air. Health and education levels are up everywhere. Many mi hundreds of millions, 800 million to be exact, have joined the global middle class. We've seen tremendous, tremendous advancements in agriculture, environmental protection. We've seen improvements in civil rights. And we've witnessed technical and biological marvels that promise a better future for all. Is the work done? No way. But every single day, people of goodwill are making a difference in our world. 
Certainly, everyone in this room is a part of this. And I applaud you for being here this week. I applaud you for being here, for coming here, and for the difference that you're making each and every day around the world. And I do believe also that we're on the verge of some many great new accomplishments um, in all areas of life. In every case, innovation, entrepreneurship, business leadership is going to be absolutely, absolutely essential. And I know that people like those that are in this room are going to lead the way for that. So thank you again. Thank you, Alisa Banju, when you called me, inviting me uh, to come and speak here about four or five months ago. Um, um, I was so happy, um, and I'm really honored to be here. Jonathan Ortman, thank you for um, being part of the group that selected, leading the group that selected Istanbul for this uh, wonderful event. And um, I wish you success, and I'm really, really happy that uh, I was here and uh, to witness this and wish you all a great meeting. Thank you so much.